Welcome back to the TPR86CC build series. I've had the MVT Digital Direct ignition on my scooter for a while now, and I've never tried to change the ignition timing from what MVT recommends. So MVT provides specs for standard stroke and longer than standard stroke engines. Mine has a 44 millimeter stroke, so that's a longer than standard stroke. So I've set it up at 0.35 millimeters before top dead center, and I've just left it there because it's ran very well with this ignition system and I haven't heard any detonation so I've had no reason to really change it. But I think it's about time that I at least do a couple of quick checks to find out if I can get any more from this ignition system and it shouldn't take a whole lot of effort. My initial plan is to see if I can retard the timing by 3 degrees and then perhaps advance the timing by 3 degrees and see if either one of those settings gives me any sort of benefit. I'm thinking that that's a large enough increment that if it's going to make a much of a difference that I should see it, but also a small enough of an increment that I'm not going to make any huge changes and ruin anything by just changing it that much. So for anyone that's not really used to this, when your piston approaches top dead center, the very top of the stroke, the spark plug fires and ignites the mixture. And this happens before the piston actually reaches top dead center. So if you advance the ignition timing, you actually fire the spark plug a little further before top dead center than usual. And if you retard the ignition timing, you fire the spark plug when the piston is a little bit closer to top dead center. Once you've got a basic understanding of what advancing or retarding the ignition timing is, then I think the next question that most people would have would be, why would you want to move it around? Why wouldn't you just leave it wherever some manufacturer specifies? So MVT specifies, this setting for my ignition system, why wouldn't I just leave it there and call it good enough? And I have done that for quite a while, and a lot of times it can be best to stick with a manufacturer's recommended spec, but when you're really hunting for power or if you've changed your engine setup around, it can pay off to move the ignition timing around and try to find what works best. So why does something work better would be the next question. In order to figure that one out, we need to think a little bit more about how our engine works or to understand a little bit more about how our engine works. As I've said, when the piston is traveling toward top dead center, the spark plug ignites the mixture and begins the combustion process. Now it's very important to think of this as a combustion or a burning rather than something that often gets said, and that is that it is an explosion. Now to the naked eye, this thing's happening really fast and I would call it an explosion. But when we think about how the engine works, we really need to think about this as a burning. Because at least in my mind, the idea of an explosion, it sounds so instantaneous. It sounds like the spark plug ignites the mixture and bang, it's all gone. That's it. Everything's over. There's an immediate pressure spike. That's all it is. But what should happen within our cylinder is the spark plug should ignite the mixture and it should begin to burn. The flame front should begin to propagate across the cylinder. Gases are expanding and pressure is rising. It's not just bang. If it is just a bang, then we've got a problem. So that's why we actually have to ignite the mixture when the piston is still on the way up the bore. That's why we don't just wait for the piston to get to top dead center and then it all goes off immediately and pushes the piston back down. Now we understand that it does take time to burn the air and fuel mixture. And the next thing we need to be aware of is that there's usually a point in crank angle that we're looking to create the peak cylinder pressure. So it's generally about 10 to 20 degrees, and that's a pretty rough range, but about 10 to 20 degrees after top dead center when we want to see peak cylinder pressure. So the piston is traveling up the bore, we ignite the mixture, and then that flame front starts expanding as the piston is still traveling toward top dead center, and when it starts to make its way down, we want to see a lot of pressure there to push on the top of the piston once it's about 10 to 20 degrees past top dead center. So we want to really put a lot of pressure on that piston, push it down and make the best use of all of our fuel and energy. If the timing is off, it happens too early or too far advanced. As your piston is traveling up the bore, you ignite that mixture too early and then it starts putting force on the piston that's trying to travel upwards. And you're always going to have some force on that piston because we are igniting that mixture and there is a lot of compression up there. But it's even greater force trying to push against the piston trying to get toward the top of the bore. So you lose horsepower that also changes how much energy you can use on the good end when it's trying to push the piston back down the bore. And 
if you've got a kickstart bike scooter um, you can actually notice this sometimes if you advance the timing too far you will feel that it kicks back really hard when you try to kickstart it sometimes the most common thing that people experience when the ignition is too far advanced is detonation and that's that explosive combustion that we do not want we want a nice controlled burn but if you push the advance too far that spark is too far before top dead center then you could run into spark knock or detonation and usually you will actually hear a spark knock um, and sometimes you can even feel the effects of it and it is generally doing engine damage when you hear that noise um, it can be eating away at the piston it's putting a lot of stress on all the parts of the engines etc so we try to avoid that if combustion happens too late so your ignition timing is too far retarded then we tend to see a loss in peak power so basically we're not making good use of all that combustion energy so if your piston is traveling toward top dead center and you ignite everything late it may be traveling back down the bore before you really start to see that flame front spread and make a lot of pressure but by then remember you've also got compression and expansion because of the piston itself moving so it compresses everything toward top dead center when it's on its way back down everything is expanding you don't want everything to expand too much before you're at the peak combustion point because you're not using that energy to push the piston down you're not getting as much energy out of everything in the cylinder you can also end up with something that feels uh, an engine that hesitates bogs even backfires if you've got a lot of ignition retard okay now let's say we've figured out the time it takes to burn the mixture so we know where our ignition point is so that we can get the mixture to be burning just how we want it when the piston is at a certain point then we just set our timing right to that point everywhere and we're good to go right wrong it gets a little more complicated or actually a lot more complicated than that when you start looking at other factors so the first one that's easy to understand is just the idea that as the engine rotates faster so say 2000 rpm versus 10,000 rpm there is less time between 10 degrees before top dead center and 10 degrees after top dead center at 2000 rpm than there is at 10,000 rpm that time kind of crunches we'll say there's less time between those two points so that means we actually need to ignite the spark or ignite the mixture earlier farther advanced as engine rpm increases because we need that same amount of time to burn the air and fuel mixture so we've got to push one side forward in order to get the other side to align right where we want it when you think about that you would expect that every time you see a timing graph or a timing curve what you would see is at low rpm you don't have a whole lot of advance and then at high rpm you've got a lot of advance and it would basically just be a line going up at an angle from low rpm to high rpm less advanced to more advanced simple except it then gets more complicated because we have to deal with burn rate and burn rate can be affected by a number of variables all sorts of things can change the burn rate of the mixture so just to be clear if the burn rate increases that means it takes less time to burn and that generally means you will need less ignition advance if the burn rate decreases it burns slower it takes more time and you will need more ignition advance to make up for that so one of the factors is the temperature the hotter it is generally the faster the mixture is going to burn the colder it is the slower it's going to burn also density of the mixture which can be affected by things like compression and load as well as just cylinder filling so the more dense the mixture is the more tightly packed all the air and fuel molecules are the quicker the flame front will expand the faster it will burn and if everything is spread out more it's not very dense you don't have good cylinder filling then it takes longer for that flame front to propagate throughout the cylinder also mixture quality so that can be air fuel ratio very rich and very lean ratios will not burn at the same rate as a more ideal ratio and a more ideal ratio usually is going to be something like 12 and a half to 13 to 1 air fuel ratio anything outside of that range is going to burn slower also mixture quality can be dilution so in a two-stroke especially you may have a lot of exhaust gas in the cylinder that's not getting evacuated properly um, anything like that anything that dilutes the mixture will change the burn rate 
and that slows it down. You want the what you really want is a tightly packed group of air and fuel that is nicely mixed and that will burn very quickly. And also fuel properties. So the pump gas that most of us are putting in our scooters is going to burn differently than race gas. And even 87 octane may burn different than 92 octane. The, and especially when you start looking at alcohol, methanol, all that kind of stuff, the burn rate can, can change drastically. Timing curves can be pretty tricky, especially if you happen to be used to, say, a two-stroke and you look at a four-strokes timing curve, or if you're more used to a four-stroke and you look at a two-strokes timing curve, because they're basically backwards from each other, essentially. So if you look at a four-stroke timing curve, and again, these vary greatly. Some people will just lock the timing out on a four-stroke and it'll be one timing across the board. Same thing happens on a two-stroke sometimes. But generally, when you see a four-stroke timing curve, what you'll notice is they have less advance at low RPM and more advance at high RPM, which goes more along with what I told you before, what we spoke about with the time that it takes to burn something and having less time as RPM increases. It kind of makes sense that way. Then if you see a two-stroke timing curve, it's totally the opposite. Most of the time what you'll see is a lot of advance at low RPM and very little advance at high RPM. So it gets kind of strange to look at and you think, why would that happen? A lot of the shaping of ignition timing curves is going to be because of the burn rate that we spoke about earlier and all of the variables that affect it. One of the big ones being the cylinder filling ability across RPM. So pretty much any engine is designed to be more efficient in a certain area. More modern engines can have all sort of technologies that try to increase the efficiency across a broader range to get good cylinder filling pretty much anywhere and widen the power band. But any engine is going to vary in how well it fills the cylinder. So maybe at 2000 RPM you don't get great cylinder filling, but at 10,000 RPM that's right where the engine wants to be and it's doing a good job of getting a nice dense mixture in there. So that can change how much advance you need, how much ignition advance you need to get everything aligned as we talked about earlier. It can also be things like diluting the mixture. In a two-stroke, a lot of the reasons that you will see so much advance at low RPM is because these things tend to be very inefficient when they're outside of their power band. And they're not the most efficient thing ever inside of their power band because we don't have those fancy valves that the four-strokes do. But when you get a lot of the mixture being diluted, you don't get a lot of cylinder filling, and it's diluted with exhaust gases, you need a lot of advance at low RPM in order to make up for that. So that's part of it. Another thing can be that we actually can move heat around by changing the ignition timing, the advance or retard. Anyone that works with two strokes very much should be well aware that the exhaust system is a major factor in power production with a two stroke engine. It's a very big deal. And it is also why we may change ignition timing around. So a very simplified version of how an exhaust system works is basically through wave tuning. You have waves that travel around within the pipe. They kind of bounce back and forth in the pipe to the cylinder. And if you have a shorter pipe, it will take less time for that wave to reflect and bounce back. If you have a longer pipe, it takes more time. So that's kind of how one way that exhaust systems are tuned to work at certain RPM levels. But also, the speed of sound changes and how waves move through air or a mixture uh, will change with temperature. So if we can put a lot of heat in the exhaust, it will actually speed up how quickly those waves reflect back and forth and change the timing of our exhaust system, basically. So if we want to extend power on the top end at high RPM, what we can try to do is to see if we can use the ignition timing to put more heat into the exhaust and then make our exhaust effectively tuned for a higher RPM than it was originally intended for. And that may widen our power band or at least create more power above the curve, so to speak. And the way that we do this is if you think about the way the timing works, if you back that timing off, you make it happen later, you will actually have more of that combustion event pushing out into the exhaust and putting heat into the pipe that way. Conversely, you can actually make the pipe hit earlier as well by trying to move the timing more advanced at low RPM. It will help the exhaust system hit or get into its peak range 
earlier on so you can get it moving and accelerating better that way. So using ignition timing that way we can extend how well the pipe works or where the pipe works in a two-stroke engine and that can be very important. It can also be used to move heat around in ways to change how, um, how much heat the piston crown sees and things like that. But the biggest deal usually in the two-stroke are just the efficiencies and then trying to get the pipe to work the best that we can. One of the main points to take away from all of this is that ignition timing requirements vary and they can vary for all sorts of reasons so that's why you can't expect anything to come out of a box and have exactly the right ignition timing for you and that's why a lot of times by just doing small adjustments we can find a little bit of power. The first step for me in starting this process was trying to figure out the actual crank angle that my MVT ignition is set at. So I know that it's set at 0.35 millimeters before top dead center. That's basically a piston position. But what I wanted to know was the crank angle or how many degrees before top dead center 0.35 millimeter is because I wanted to base my changes off of degrees. That means a whole lot more to me than X millimeters before top dead center does. I started looking around for an equation to convert piston position that's my millimeters before top dead center to crank angle which would be degrees before top dead center and I kind of came up with some blanks I got some some options online but uh, some of them didn't even make a whole lot of sense to me I'm not sure if we were talking about the same thing with what I uh, was searching for but I ended up going to my old standby which is the book two-stroke performance tuning by AG Bell and I'm sure a lot of you two-stroke guys are very familiar with it. If you're not, you should really check it out. It's a great thing to read. It may not be the most modern stuff, but it's a huge help to all of us that are trying to learn two-strokes. So anyway, in this book, he actually does list the equation so that if you know the piston position, you can calculate the degrees before top dead center. And I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen. And I've also put up an example problem. At least for me, having an example problem is helpful because I never took trigonometry and it's been many years since I was taught any sort of math. So uh, all that stuff is kind of rusty and it's sort of nice to have a problem to follow along and see if I come up with the same answer so then you know if you are or are not doing it properly. In addition to this, he also has an equation to do the opposite. So if we know the crank angle that we're after, in my case it would be desired crank angle, uh, then we can convert to how many millimeters before top dead center and this both of these things are very useful if you're trying to do what we're doing here and move an, a racing ignition or even a stock ignition uh, advance or retard it if you only know millimeters before top dead center. After making sure that these equations came up with the results that I was looking for they were working for me I decided that it would be much easier for myself and anyone else that watches this video or participates on my forum or visits my site if I just put up a couple of calculators on my calculator page. So I've already got calculators on the site, I just didn't have the ones to do this. So if you go to 49ccscoot.com backslash calculators.html, you can easily find these. I'll also put that link in the description to make it super simple just to click on that. Um, yeah, so my goal with that page is just to, I've, I've been adding calculators to it for years uh, as I kind of run into something that I'm doing myself. If it's useful for me, I figure maybe it's useful for someone else. So if you need some different calculations for your scooter work, go and check that page out and these calculators will definitely be up there. After getting those done, it was very quick to come up with whatever numbers I wanted to look at. So in my case, I want to move the timing three degrees advanced and three degrees retarded versus my initial setting. So I found that at 0.35 millimeters before top dead center with my stroke and connecting rod length, it comes out to 9.12 degrees. Now you can see on my timing curve that I don't actually see any timing that low. Maybe it gets to that point later on uh, at higher RPM than I tested at, but that's where that actually is. So all I need to know in order to advance or retard the ignition timing is what, how many millimeters before top dead center then would 12 degrees and 6 degrees be roughly. Um, and then I could move to those settings in order to advance or retard my timing. So I could just plug those into my calculators and come up with these answers.
Now I can combine the information from my current specs, the calculated results, and the timing graph to get the information that you see beside me, and that will give me a pretty good idea of what's happening when I change the ignition timing. If you're interested in how this process really works, how you time this out, I have a very detailed video about setting up this MVT ignition, so you should check that out, and it will show you everything about how to precisely set up your ignition system. But, for now, I've got my dial indicator in the cylinder, it goes in through the spark plug hole, and it's indicating the pistons travel. And I'm set at 0.35 millimeters before top dead center, just as the specs are for the MVT ignition system. While it's set that way, the mark on my rotor aligns with the mark on my stator. The two timing marks align, so that's where my ignition is set up just as their specs provide to do it. In order to change this, I first need to be able to loosen up this stator plate so that it can rotate. And it's got an Allen bolt here and one down here, but you need to rotate the rotor around so that this lines up with each bolt and that allows you to loosen those up. And it's a four millimeter key. I'm not going to try to make these extremely loose, just loose enough that hopefully it will twist. And I can move this around until it aligns with the bottom bolt. I just don't want it super loose because once I get it set, it'll be a little easier to keep it where I want it if it's not really, really loose. Now I need to rotate the engine around until my dial indicator here is set at the position that I want, which as I've shown you, is 0.16 millimeters before top dead center. So I'm setting it to my new timing. So I've got to rotate it all the way around until the piston is on its way back up the bore. And then go very slowly. All right, so now you can see that I am at 0.16 millimeters before top dead center. While the engine is in this position, my dial indicator is still reading 0.16 millimeters before top dead center. I need to rotate this orange stator back here so that the line on it, the timing mark on it, will align with this orange mark on my rotor. It probably won't look aligned on the video because viewing angle is very critical to this, but I've got both of those marks aligned while my piston is sitting 0.16 millimeters before top dead center. So now I just need to lock my stator back in place by tightening the bolts on that without moving it around. I've got it tightened down and now I just need to rotate this back around and make sure that nothing moved so my marks are still aligned when I come up to 0.16 millimeters on there. Everything still looks good so now I can remove my dial indicator, put my spark plug back in and then we'll go find out how it runs. That test run didn't feel good at all to me. It felt like it was struggling to get on the pipe much more than it normally does. There was a delay in the power coming in, which made it feel sluggish a little bit on takeoff. And if I try to do little power wheelies, it was also sluggish there and it was harder to get it to pull the front end up. Um, and on the flip side, it didn't feel like it made any more power. If anything, it kind of felt like it was struggling on the top end as well. So I'm thinking that that's going to be a negative change, but before I go in and review the videos and actually time everything out, I'm going to go ahead and try the ignition advance as well, and then we can compare everything. So basically now what I've got to do is I've got to go in and I had it set at 0.16 millimeters before top dead center, and now I've got to get it set to 0.62 millimeters before top dead center, and that will be three degrees of advance versus my initial settings. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time showing you this in great detail this time around because it's literally the same process, just the number that I'm setting this to when on my dial indicator is different.
Now I've got the timing marks aligned. While my dial indicator says that the piston is 0.62 millimeters before top dead center, so it should be ready to go set up three degrees advanced versus my initial setting. The test with advanced timing felt a whole lot better than the test with retarded timing to me. And I could definitely tell a difference in the responsiveness or the throttle response even beyond standard timing because I noticed that I could roll into the throttle fairly easy and still be able to get it to pick the wheel up. So it was doing quite well that way. Um, I wasn't sure that it would translate into any better zero to whatever acceleration times, but it did feel at least a little snappier than it normally does. So I went in and I analyzed all the results and actually even though I had just done some clutch testing a couple of days prior to this, I went ahead and did another set of test runs this morning just as it sat with standard timing. That way I could be certain of exactly how it was running today. And I've got all of those numbers for you. So you can see that retarding the timing clearly did nothing good for it. I lost three tenths of a second versus either of them on zero to 30. 0 to 40 was 2 to 3 sec tenths of a second slower and it was almost 8.5 seconds to 50 where with the timing advanced 3 degrees it was just shy of 8 seconds. And I also noticed that the RPM really seemed to struggle in the mid-range in the middle of my run with the timing retarded. You'll notice that the uh, RPM is about 13,400 on average when I was at 40 miles per hour in my acceleration runs when the timing was retarded and you can see every other run it was two to three hundred RPM higher. It just seemed like it was struggling with the timing retarded. Now I also did tests since I'd done the, te the clutch test just a couple of days prior it went quicker during my clutch test. So I think what's happening is this scooter has had I believe a, fl a high uh, float height setting for a while now and when I leave it tipped over on the side stand I usually find a very small puddle like some droplets of oil or gas and oil below the carburetor so I think because the float height is high if it leans over it just overflows a little bit well then today I've noticed that it actually has had much larger puddles maybe puddles that are a few inches across so it seems to be leaking a significant amount of fuel today versus any other time. And I also seem to be noticing that I'm having to really make sure that it's cleared out when I'm taking off. So I think what's happening is that that high float height, most likely, is causing it to load up a little more than it normally would. So it kind of takes a second to get going or an extra tenth of a second, for example, uh, to get going. I don't know for sure. I'm not going to get into that right now uh, because... I actually want to change out my air box from a cheap Chinese air box to maybe something that's a little bit better. When I do that, I'll go ahead and take the uh, carburetor off. I'll check the float height, clean it out just because it's been a while, and go over the tune. And hopefully I'll get back down to the clutch test times, if not even quicker, based on what I'm seeing. But for right now, it seems like the engine is responding well to the advance. So I'm going to leave the engine advanced right where it is. Again, that's three degrees advanced beyond MVT's initial timing setting. So I've got my rotor set or my timing set to 0.62 millimeters before top dead center. I could push it further, try to do say four, five, six, whatever degrees of advance and see if it keeps going. But I really don't want to push it because again, like I said earlier in the video, too much advance is likely to cause engine damage and I'd rather keep it safe. It seems to be doing pretty well here. Another option I would have would be to find out if perhaps this was even a little too much advance and I could try to back it off maybe to one and a half degrees advanced instead of three degrees advanced or something like that and see what happens. Again, I'm not interested in getting into all that right this second. It may be something I do someday, but uh, yeah, for now, I'm going to leave it where it is. I did make sure that when I was riding with the Advance, I rolled into the throttle all the way to wide open throttle and then slowly rolled out of the throttle 
all the way down because usually if you're going to have detonation that is audible to you, you will hear it some at some point rolling into or out of the throttle slowly. I also made sure I cruised at different speed and RPM and different throttle positions and just listened for a couple of seconds. So make sure you do that anytime you advance timing or change your timing at all. It's a good idea to be very careful. Change throttle positions on your first run. If you hear any kind of detonation, spark knock, sounds kind of like a rattle. I actually have a video about that as well. Um, then you should back off your timing or find out what else is going on, what's wrong with your setup. It can also be stuff like running too lean and the engine's running extra hot, something like that. But do not let detonation go unchecked. It's not going to do anything good for you. If this video has been helpful, if it's taught you anything, or if it's entertained you, then please be sure to leave a like, share it with anyone else that you think might find it useful, and subscribe for more and click the bell to receive notifications. Thank you for watching.